Australia and the United States held their largest ever military exercise. The war games were hosted by Australia. The military exercise is codenamed Talisman Sabre. Talisman Sabre is held every two years. The war drills are conducted over two weeks. Talisman Sabre is a multinational military exercise. Its first edition was in 2005. It's led by Australia and the United States. This year was the 10th time the exercise was held. It was also the largest talisman sabre ever. A total of 13 nations participated and more than 30,000 troops were involved. Talisman Sabre is meant to increase cooperation between Australia, the US and their Pacific allies. Military personnel conduct drills across various domains. This includes maritime, land, air and cyber operations. The drills are a platform for troops of various nations to increase cooperation, understand interoperability and enhance synergy among them. All of this is, is actually building uh, muscle memory between our two countries' defence forces is building comfort um, and familiarity, and obviously not just between Australia and the United States, but the other 11 countries that will be participating in the course of Exercise Talisman Sabre. This year's Talisman Sabre was conducted across two territories of Australia. These were the Northern Territory and Queensland, which is east of the Northern Territory. Both these regions have vast coastlines. It enables military personnel to conduct land-based, maritime and air power operations. More than 17,000 personnel were deployed in the maritime domain. That's more than half of the total troops participating. A total of 27 ships and submarines were deployed. The exercise is a show of strength and the signalling of a joint force particularly focused towards China. I think the, the most important message that China can take from this exercise and anything that our allies and partners do together is that we are extremely tied by the core values that exist amongst our many nations together. And we are prepared to actually operate together in defense of our national security interests and in, in defense of the, the core values that we all share as Western and non-Western countries working together. Australia and the United States strategically invited this year's participants. NATO members Canada, France, Germany and the UK were part of the drills. This was the first time that France and Germany took part in Talisman Sabre. Berlin's invite comes three years after it published its Indo-Pacific strategy. Gut, ich denke mal, es geht nicht darum, ein Signal gegen jemanden zu senden. Wir haben gerade die nationale... I guess it's not about sending a signal against anyone. We have just taken note of the German government's national security strategy. China plays a certain role in it. There will be a China strategy of the German government, but I guess this whole engagement in the Pacific is not directed against anyone, but is an inclusive, integrative approach. Es geht darum, die Partner, die wir dort unten haben, eben zu stärken. From the Indo-Pacific region, the Philippines was invited. Meanwhile, Japan, South Korea and New Zealand also participated. For the first time, the Pacific nations of Papua New Guinea, Fiji and Tonga were also invited. During Talisman Sabre, Australia and the US took their military ties to new heights. The US commissioned a naval warship at a foreign port for the first time ever. The USS Canberra was commissioned on the Sydney Harbour. The warship honours an Australian ship, the HMAS Canberra, which was sunk in 1942 during World War II while it was supporting American forces. The USS Canberra is a reminder of historic and lasting military ties between the two nations. Today is a momentous day for the crew of this ship. It's also a day of celebration for our navies, a great Navy day as they say, and it's a celebration and a very visible example of our two nations' shared history, contemporary partnership, and commitment to the future. Oh, it's absolutely important. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do this. It's a culmination of not just the ship naming, uh, of honoring the, the, the city, but the previous HMAS Canberra that was lost in World War II, 
uh, and the other USS Kember that was named in honor of her. And then we've, we've really enjoyed connecting with the newest HMAS Canberra 3 uh, and her crew who marched with us this morning. The USS Canberra is a littoral combat ship. It's a small vessel and is designed for shore defense. It has 40 crew members. The ship has an operational range of almost 8,000 kilometers. In terms of firepower, it has a 57 mm automatic cannon. 11 missile launchers and a landing pad for maritime helicopters and drones. The warship will serve as a testament to military ties between the US and Australia. During the war drills, the US Army test-fired a short-range ballistic missile, the MGM-140 Army Tactical Missile System. This was the first time that the missile was test-fired on foreign soil. The Army Tactical Missile System is capable of hitting targets at a range of 300 kilometers. The missile has a single warhead and a payload of up to 500 kilograms. It's guided by GPS navigation systems. The missile is launched from mobile ground platforms like the HIMARS. More than 3,700 missile units have been built by the United States. Nine nations are already operating the missile and Australia will become the 10th. Japan also joined the line of firsts. Japan's most advanced anti-ship weapon, the Type 12 surface-to-ship missile, was also test-fired in foreign land for the first time. The weapon was launched from a truck-mounted platform. It successfully hit an unmanned ship. The Type 12 is made by Japan's Mitsubishi Industries. It has a range of up to 200 kilometers. The missile is guided by GPS and has stealth features, making it difficult for the adversary to detect it. Japanese troops also showcase the missile to soldiers of participating nations. Our participation in this exercise enhances the trust and the relationship between Australia and Japan. During the exercise, armies, navies and air forces of the 13 nations worked together. They conducted live-fire drills. This included firing artillery at weapons training areas. Well, this is really important. It's the first time Talisman Sabre has undertaken a live-fire exercise in the Beecroft weapons range. So it's really important for us to be able to demonstrate the flexibility of all of our training areas and it's great to have Navy uh, involved this far south mostly uh, and we exercise Talisman Sabre with the Navy much further north. Paratroopers conducted airborne drills. Nations also deployed their fighter jets. The US and the UK brought aircraft carriers. Ships and submarines operated off the coast of Australia into the Pacific Ocean. The message was clear. The exercise became a unifying platform to form a deterrent team against an adventurous China. So our mission is to deter, or deter our adversaries from doing things that they want to do that perhaps isn't in the best interest of our own national security interests. And in order to do that effectively, we've got to be able to learn how to operate together. So these platforms, whether they're on land, whether they're at sea, whether they're in space, or in the air, they're extremely complicated. And we're constantly adding capabilities to them year after year after year. So it's important to every couple of years come together in exercises like this. So how did Beijing respond? During the Talisman Sabre, a Chinese warship came close to Australian waters. Beijing sent a surveillance ship to track the naval maneuvers of the participating nations. However, it maintained its course in international waters, but it constantly tracked and gained intelligence. No, look, they've come before, and, and look, I'll tell you now, there's one, one off the east coast of Australia at the moment. We reached out on Thursday uh, and hailed that vessel in the Coral Sea. It'll move down, I expect, and join the exercise or be in the location of the exercise again. Uh, they've done this for a number of years. We're well prepared for it. Just one day after Talisman Saver ended, a Chinese Coast Guard ship used a water cannon on a Philippine ship. The Philippines participated in Talisman Saber. Was this just a coincidence or was this Beijing's signaling to Manila? Both sides claim their ships did not violate the other sovereign waters. We continue to, to, to assert our sovereignty. We continue to um, 
to assert our territorial rights in the face of all of these challenges and uh, consistent with uh, the international law and UNCLOS especially. Uh, so that is uh, that has al always been our stand, and that will. But we still have to keep uh, we still have to keep communicating with the Chinese government, with President Xi, with Beijing. We still have to keep communicating with them because we need to really come to a conclusion. Request to stay clear from our passage in accordance with the collision regulation. Over. The U.S. has condemned China's actions. Washington has pledged to conduct more joint patrols with Manila. This year's Talisman Sabre was backed by the U.S. not just militarily, but diplomatically as well. During the exercise, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, paid a visit to participating Pacific nations. He first went to New Zealand and met Prime Minister Chris Hipkins. Blinken then went to Tonga and pledged support for the Pacific region. President Biden is fully committed to working with Tonga and with all Pacific Islands to usher in a new era of even closer collaboration to deliver on the issues that matter most to our people, rooted in mutual respect and mutual trust. Uh, this partnership is vital to making real a shared vision for the region uh, and the broader Indo-Pacific. Uh, a region that's open, that's free, that's connected, that's prosperous, that's secure, that is resilient. For his final stop, Blinken arrived in Australia. There, he was joined by his compatriot, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who also completed a trip to Papua New Guinea. In Australia, Blinken and Austin held meetings with their counterparts and pledged support for a free Indo-Pacific region. And I know that both of our countries are concerned about attempts by the People's Republic of China to depart from these principles. We've seen troubling PRC coercion from the East China Sea to the South China Sea to right here in the Southwest Pacific. And we'll continue to support our allies and partners as they defend themselves from bullying behavior. The Pacific outreach ended with Austin interacting with troops that took part in Talisman Sabre. The U.S. is working towards an active involvement in the Pacific. Its policies attest to that. Washington's diplomatic outreach has increased. Australia is aiding America's efforts. And that is exactly what Talisman Sabre has underscored.